morning, everyone. Uh, uh, first, I want to thank uh, the organizers and give me this chance to uh, share my actually incredible <coughs> paper uh, with uh, the veritable uh, center. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, so, uh, you seem to be introducing yourself, but, um, so this is uh, Fei Li. He's going to talk to us about uh, polar nanoregions in lead titanate. So, um, let's start. Okay, thank you. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the contribution of polar nanoregions to shadow radioactive or laser PT crystals. Actually, the contribution of the lead PT crystals is about the uh, uh, the composition of this crystal is actually been used in practical parametric uh, devices. The top researchers of this work are Professor Su Jin Zhang, Dr. Tian Nan Yang, Professor Zhou Guangye, Dr. Jun Wo from TRS Pro Crystal, and uh, Professor Lu Qingchen supervised uh, the field simulation, and Professor Tom Song. Here is my outline for this uh, <coughs> for my presentation. First, I will give a short introduction about the hydroelectric activity for the laser dielectric crystal. Here, I just uh, list the two most, I uh, think this is the most important uh, uh, characteristic for the hydroelectric act uh, activity of the laser PD crystal. First, the laser PD crystals have very high hydroelectric coefficient and also very high coping. Uh, uh, electromechanical coupling case race rate, which is larger than 90%, and also electric field induced spin. You can see from this figure, the spin is much higher than the soft PDT ceramics. And uh, the second uh, characteristic is that uh, the hysteresis in the electric field induced spin is very small. You can see in this figure, the hysteresis in PM PT crystal is much lower than the soft PDT ceramics and uh, comparable to the hard PDT ceramics. Uh, this means that uh, the contribution from, uh, from the more motion is minimal in the device PD crystal. So the ultra high piezoelectric uh, activity of the device PD crystal has to attribute to the intrinsic piezoelectric uh, response. From the intrinsic respect, we can see from this figure, with the composition close to the morphotropic phase boundary, the energy, uh, free energy property will become flattened. So there is a uh, east polarization rotation path, as uh, published in two sun, as uh, Professor Cohen and uh, uh, I think uh, Professor Wu. And uh, there, uh, the east polarization rotation path will result, for the property will result in a high shear pedal electricity in a single domain crystal. So, uh, for reliability crystal, we generally observe the high pedal electric anisotropy. Here, for, this is the Romopedal crystal. We can see that the largest uh, distance way generally along the over one direction, which is about uh, 10 to 20 times higher than that along the polar one on one direction. So in uh, for using this crystal, generally we need to follow the crystal along a non-polar direction. We follow the normal middle crystal along O1 direction. In this case, the uh, uh, D33 could benefit from the polarization rotation I'm showing in this figure. Uh, but this mechanism cannot uh, answer the question why relaxer PT crystal is heavy to worry high piezoelectric response compared to other MPD materials. Because for the PDT ceramic, we can see from this figure, uh, D33 and the uh, dielectric conductivity is much lower than that of the relaxer PT crystal. So we generally ask uh, ourselves two polar nano regions, we call it the PNR. NPR polar nano regions contribute to the high piezoelectric response. Actually, recently, uh, lots of studies have been carried out to explore this issue. Here I list a few of them in, as a reference. Uh, so, the motivation of our study here is to answer the following three questions. First, do polar nano regions contribute to the ultra high piezoelectric activity? 
uh, from this table, you can you can see that the lesser based parallel is generally show very high dielectric conductivity and a high distance weight in lesser based parallel But uh, we still lack of the direct evidence to show that the high parallel electricity is related to the coronal regions. So this is the first question. And the, the second question is uh, what's the level of the contribution? Because if the contribution of coronal regions is just 10 or 5 percent from a material sky, we, we actually we don't care about that if the contribution is too low. And the third question is what's the mechanism for this contribution? Uh, in order to study the coronal regions contribution generally approach to study the dielectric conductivity with respect to the temperature and the frequency. Uh, because coronal regions contribution could be ruled out at the cryogenic temperature or very high frequency. But uh, as you know, the reliable PT crystal has very high tidal electric response, so <coughs> the measure of frequency cannot be very high for this crystal because of the tidal electric resonance. So our study focused on the cryogenic properties for laser PT crystal. We choose single domain crystal for this study because we want to avoid possible contribution from the more motion. And we focus on the transport and the shared tidal electric properties. You can see from this table, the transport dielectric permittivity and the shared tidal electric coefficient are much higher than their longitudinal counterparts. So this is a critical factor for the high tidal electricity. So in this study, we choose transfer dielectric connectivity and the shared tidal electric coefficient. Uh, here is a uh, schematic for our study sample. We pull the sample along the polar direction. The normal middle crystal we pull it along the long one direction. And then we measure the properties perpendicular to this direction. Here is the composition we selected to make it for our study comprehensive. We select uh, uh, three different phase crystals, Rombohedo, Aurombic, and Tecano. All these crystals are around the MPB, but a little bit away from MPB. Uh, here is the composition for these three, uh, three crystals. Here is the uh, the transfer of data from uh, properties for the crystals. We can see that at high temperature, it uh, looks like a normal fire electric. We cannot find the, the frequency dependence of the data activity. Uh, but at the, the temperature below 150 Kelvin, you can see that here is a large variation of data activity, which is about 50 to 80 percent of the room temperature property. And uh, also, there is a dielectric relaxation. You can see that uh, the temperature of the dielectric loose, the maximum dielectric loose will increase with, the, uh, with increasing the frequency. So we also measure the shear hydroelectric uh, response. Uh, similar to the transfer dielectric conductivity, uh, as a Temperature below 150 Kelvin, we also found, uh, observed a very high uh, variation of the property. And this variation is about 15 to 80 percent of the room temperature property. In order to know why there is a large variation at low temperature, first uh, we double check the phase at the cryogenic temperature. We did the uh, X ray experiments on the surface of the crystals. Uh, from room temperature to 50 Kelvin. Uh, from this experiment, we cannot find any evidence to show that there is a phase transition. And also, we did a polarized uh, light microscopy for the domain structure. And uh, from room temperature to 100 Kelvin, actually, there is no change for the domain structure at the macro sphere. We also measure the longitudinal dielectric conductivity for this crystal. The longitudinal dielectric conductivity is very sensitive to the phase transition part. You can see here is the Romobedo to Tecano phase transition, and here is the Aurombedo to Tecano phase transition. Here is the Tecano to Cubic phase transition. So it's very sensitive to phase transition, but at low temperature, 
the wires are in wires long, so we, we don't think that there is a, a long range phase transition at a giant time measure. So I want to uh, give a sh uh, short summary for my experimental observations. We observed a very large increase of dielectric conductivity and piezoelectric propagation <coughs> at a temperature below 150 Kelvin. And uh, this variation is then related to a long range dielectric phase transition. Here I compared it to a PDT crystal. You can see that. Uh, I want to make a conversion between the relaxer PD crystal and the classical paralytics. The most important uh, factor in relaxer paralytics is here. There is a large increase of the property. It's about 50 to 80 percent of room temperature property. But uh, this change is then related to a phase transition. So in my following slides, I, I, I will use a uh, phase field simulation and uh, give a tentative examination of this variation. So in order to use this field simulation, first of all, we need to know the microstructure characteristic of relaxer PD crystals. Uh, we think that the most important characteristic is uh, local homogeneity, as observed by the field, start, uh, the field starting requirements. In Ramohedo relaxed PD crystals, in uh, 10 years ago, Going uh, to observe that uh, the polynomial regions are actually all around big phase. And also, uh, by TM experiments, the local symmetry of the reality crystals is very different from long range phase. So, in our simulation, we take the uh, relaxed crystal as a, a nano composite with a combination of parallel matrix and the polynomial regions. Here is some basic information in our simulation. So we choose a uh, parallel matrix as a uh, tetragonal phase and polynomial gradients are said to be all rhombic phase. For the current temperature of the parallel matrix, uh, we use the experiment data of the PDN 0 18 PT crystal, 470 Kelvin. And uh, for the current temperature of polynomial gradients, we use the uh, bones temperature of the PDN 0 0.15 PD crystal is about uh, 620 Kelvin. And uh, below current temperature, we think that no phase transition exists in the bilateral matrix and polynomial region. In this study, in my slides, uh, the value fraction of polynomial region is said to be 7.5, and the diameter of the polynomial region is about 3 to 6 nanometer with relative distribution. And uh, the phenomenological parameters in our simulation are fitted uh, according to the macroscopic properties of the PDM PT crystals. For example, the spontaneous polarization and dielectric conductivity. So here is a simulated uh, microstructure for a 100 pole parallelic uh, polynomial region composite. And the color in the figure represents the angle between polar vector and the 100 direction. We can see uh, that in after pole along 100 direction, uh, only polynomial regions with the polar direction along 110 and the one minus 10 exist in the bilateral matrix because they are favored by the electrostatic integer. And uh, the average symmetry of the 100 pole bilateral uh, in our composite is still going on. But if you look at the, some local regions, the symmetry could be much lower. This is uh, consistent with the experimental data. So here is the temperature dependent uh, microstructure. Uh, at the low temperature, at the temperature below 100 Kelvin, uh, the polynomial regions keep their original outrombic phase. Uh, which is covered by Landau potential. Well, with, with increasing temperature, some polynomial, uh, the, uh, the energy discrepancy for polynomial region between tetragonal and uh, all round big phase will decrease. So, in order to memorize the total energy of the system, some polynomial region will transform to the tetragonal phase, which means that the polar direction of polynomial region will 
look, uh, look at the to the one all over direction uh, being collinear with the uh, polar vector of the bilateral matrix. We call this state is as a collinear state of polynomial regions. As shown in the case of 350 Kelvin, you cannot spend the polynomial regions in this natural structure, which means that uh, all the polynomial regions are in collinear state. So here is a simulated dielectric uh, response for the counterfeit. We can see that with adding polynomial regions to the to the dielectric matrix, uh, the transfer dielectric response will be increased very large in a specific temperature range. Well, the longitudinal dielectric activity is almost uh, not changed. Uh, by adding the polynomial regions, this uh, results are consistent towards uh, experimental results. So uh, next we want to know why we adding polynomial regions to bilateral matrix we increase the transfer of dielectric activity. So we studied the variation of microstructure under a perpendicular electric field. The composite is pulled along the one one uh, direction the electric field is by the O1O direction. We can see that the actually the polynomial region has two different contributions. And for non-collinear polynomial regions, as shown in the case of 150 Kelvin, with applying the uh, O1O electric field, we can see here some uh, blue polynomial regions will uh, switch to the red one. We call this is a, a switching of the non-collinear polynomial regions. And the second contribution is the, from collinear polynomial regions. We can see in the case of 350 Kelvin, with applying the O1O direction, it looks like uh, polynomial regions are much easier to be rotated by the electric field. <coughs> this will contribute to the transfer of dielectric response. Uh, here is a small movie for the case of 150 Kelvin. You can see that uh, the switching of non-collinear polynomial regions could contribute to the dielectric response. But uh, this, uh, this contribution will generate a high heat resistance and loss. This is not, uh, 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 we don't want uh, this heat resistance and loss in practical application. And for 350 Kelvin, you can see that uh, the contribute uh, without apply electric field, all the polynomial regions are in collinear state, and uh, with applying electric field, the polynomial regions looks like a state to promote polarization rotation and uh, enhance the transfer of dielectric activity. The most important uh, thing here is that uh, this contribution will not generate uh, loss and the heat traces. This is actually we observed in experimental uh, in our experiments. So now there is a question why polynomial regions are much easier to be rotated when they are in collinear state. We in collinear state we if we apply a shear stress or trans uh, perpendicular dielectric uh, uh, perpendicular electric field polynomial regions are much easier to be rotated, so we want to answer these questions. Uh, in our phase field simulation, the existence of collinear polynomial region is actually driven by local electric field and the local elastic field and the gradient driving field. Here I just use the most simple, uh, the simplest way to to simulate, uh, to show this case, I use one O DC electric field to push the uh, all around the polynomial region rotated to one O direction and uh, analyze the number of potential variation during this process. Uh, you can see for the figure A, you can see here, without applying electric field, there is a large energy barrier between two all around the states of polynomial regions. With applying one O electric field, first you can see that the energy barrier will decrease for the two stable state. And uh, with further increasing the electric field, 
in the stable space of power nano region will transform the, to the tachyonal phase. The power direction of power nano region will along one whole direction. This actually is a collinear space of power nano region. And in this case, you can see that the energy property is very slight, which means that the power nano region can be easily rotated by external light field or external strikes. So now we can answer the three questions I proposed in the beginning of my presentation. First, uh, the contribution of power nano region to table electric activity is about uh, 50 to 80 percent of the room temperature properties. So it's very important for high response of the other three crystals. And uh, the mechanism actually is the introduct, uh, interaction between polynomial regions and the parallax matrix. Uh, because this introduction, some energy combination will result in unstable and collinear polynomial regions. And this will make a big contribution to piezoelectric response. So what's the requirement for high piezoelectricity here? First one is uh, monotopic phase boundary, and then polynomial region. Without <coughs> these two factors, we can have a high, very high shared piezoelectric coefficient for single domain. <coughs> and uh, we do need an uh, engineer the domain structure. By this domain structure, we can transform the shared piezoelectric response to the longitudinal piezoelectric response. So for future work, we actually need uh, to know the reasons for the existence of, of polynomial regions by atomic scale calculations. This is uh, actually this is my aim to come to this conference. So I need your help to explain why the existence of polynomial regions. And if we know that, we can design high piezoelectric uh, materials, distributed materials by controlling polynomial regions in our future world. Okay. Thanks for your attention. Um, are there questions? Uh, you claim that the dike is special mm. around 100 kilometers yeah. Yeah. is from polar origins and it's not from domain wall motion. Mm. Yeah, not from domain wall motion. Did you try to measure dielectric permittivity mm. on the bias field? Just to uh, the domain and then put no contribution to that. If it would be from domain mode. Yeah, actually, we didn't matter under this field. So you have an HD. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, and because uh, at the low temperature, the energy discrepancy, the low energy discrepancy, is very large. You can see this figure. Yeah. This energy barrier is very large at low temperature. With increasing temperature, this energy barrier will decrease. Uh, a little bit charged because actually there are the other uh, polynomial regions in this direction along, for example, not favored by the electrostatic energy, it cannot exist in other poly. So there is a little bit charge, but not a very hard chart in the interface. Any other questions? If not, then let's uh, thank our speaker.